my channel. Um, my name is Jenna for those of you that don't know me and haven't watched one of my videos before. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my YouTube style but currently I just make videos about EMS and my experience within it. So I've already filmed a video about the National Registry for Paramedics and it was requested that I do a National Registry for EMTs and a psychomotor, um, psychomotor exam video. So that's what we're going to focus on today, specifically for EMTs. Okay, so let's start with the psychomotor exam or the physical examinations. The most failed skills we see are the patient assessment trauma and the backboarding skill. And although it's been taken out of a lot of counties, it's still a testable skill per the National Registry and you need to make sure you're doing it right because you could injure a patient if you do it incorrectly. Now they all start out the same. You never ever want to forget BSI scene safety. I have known EMTs and paramedic students that have failed their psychomotor exams solely for not saying BSI scene safety and you could kill it in the rest of your assessment or your skill, but if you don't say it, it's a critical fail and you're donezo. We'll start off with the patient medical assessment because it's pretty much all talking and we can get through it pretty easily. You have an acronym we can use and that is PENMAN, P-E-N-M-A-N. -E and the P starts with our PPE, which essentially is our BSI scene safety. And then we go into our E, environmental. So we want to make sure there's no hazards. That's also making sure that there's nothing that could potentially make us a patient because that is our number one concern when we're initially going into a scene. We don't want to make ourselves a patient and we don't want to make our crew members a patient or our partner. We move into our N with our pen man and that's number of patients. So that could be ensuring we're not in an MCI situation or just have multiple patients and then we would need more multiple resources, right? So then we move into our M. So M stands for mechanism of injury or nature of illness. Sure, everything in a scene size up is not missed. And then we're gonna move in to pen A, additional resources. So if we know it's a chest pain patient, um, obviously they're gonna give you different clues about what would be appropriate, whether to just transport or wait for ALS. Um, but additional resources can mean ALS, it can mean extrication, additional resources and stating that out loud. And the last thing with our pen man, is need for C-spine. This is a point and it could be missed, especially on a trauma, it would be a critical. Now thing. we move into our primary survey slash resuscitation. This is where people get weird, especially in a medical. Medical is easy because all you do, for the most part, is talk to a patient. We'll use a chest pain assessment so we have some sort of foundation to go off of. With that, we start, we verbalize the general impression of the patient. So this is just what we see across the room. I see a 65 year old gentleman. He's sitting in the, with the Love Einstein. And we're gonna address any apparent life threats. So major bleeding, um, anything that would cause them to potentially die right now. <laughs> just think about it like that. Just the general impression we see across the room. Then we're gonna move into our AVPU. We're gonna check our responsiveness or our level of consciousness. Now, if you're going to a patient that is alert and tracking, you're going to check their AVPU by speaking to them verbally. Um, most patients, unless they're special needs or have some other underlying condition are going to be able to talk right back to you. If you were doing a medical assessment on a respiratory distress, which could include an anaphylaxis patient because they are going to go into respiratory distress, you could use PACE, the PACE acronym. Now PACE, I have this little cheat sheet right here and I will tell you where to find it later. That would be a good assessment for a shortness of breath patient. Inspect, especially anaphylaxis, we're gonna inspect everywhere. Um, shortness of breath, we're gonna palpate, as well as chest pain to see if it um, has any reproducible pain. Has this ever happened before? Um, what did they do last time? And those special questions will be more important when you're actually on your EMT time, but they do help. We're gonna intervene appropriately. So if this is a chest pain, we're gonna do our aspirin and nitro appropriately. Make sure you know your indications. Make sure you know your contraindications. So let's talk about the patient assessment for trauma. And again, I'm not gonna get too deep into this. I'm just gonna talk about it because it is one of the most most um, failed skills or assessment. Usually when you have a trauma patient, you're not gonna be dispatched to a private residence and they're sitting in a chair. You're gonna be dispatched to the middle of the street. It's a car accident. That's our typical trauma. So especially with trauma, the biggest one we're looking for is any major bleeding. That is huge. That is a huge life threat. Obviously ABCs 
but bleeding is probably the most common life threat you're going to find in a trauma assessment when you're being proctored. Shock management, are they in shock? Do we need to treat that right away before we continue on? Make sure you understand GCS. Um, don't wing that. <laughs> that is something to be memorized and that is something to use during your with your critical thinking skills, C-spine event. But with that, just make sure you're not grossly manipulating the patient. Make sure that you're not doing anything like strapping over any joints or taping over any joints. Making sure that we take C-spine C-spine should be the first thing that we do. Now that you've truly gone through these skills and practiced them, you can practice them on pillows, you can practice them with your friends, um, but it is something verbalization needs to be really practiced and your muscle memory needs to be practiced. So make sure you're doing that. And with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and end our psychomotor um, review and assessment. So our computer adaptive testing, that's our Pearson view um, testing that we do at a testing site. We did put a pause for COVID, but are getting back. Uh, we're getting back into the swing of things. So take notes that you take them in a specific format, and it doesn't have to be anything that any certain person should suggest. It's whatever works for you. So, like I mentioned in my paramedic national registry testing um, preparation video. Or there's really no way getting around computer adaptive testing. We are not doing pen and paper anymore. I will say when I first um, was going through Nash Registry for EMT, my preparation included a book. And that book was all of these questions, um, multiple choice with four answers, and there was a correct answer. And on the back of the page, there would be the rationale as to why that was the correct answer. So whether you use a printed version or you're using a consistent computer adaptive testing, where it gives you all these charts. And um, again, I've explained it in the paramedic video, but it gives you all the breakdowns of everything. I highly, highly suggest that you use that and use it consistently for at least 30 days. Um, I think there's a max of 90. Some of them have a year long subscription, whatever it is. I really suggest using one. It is probably the easiest repetition prep that you can get. So with that being said, that's pretty much all the information I have for you guys today. With COVID, I will say if you're not getting any clinical time in and you're not getting any ride-alongs, it's very, very important to practice with your classmates or even practice with people at home. Whatever your resources are to practice those assessments and practice those skills. And when you have your skill days, because I know a lot of um, a lot of places are going back to at least just skills, um, really get in there, say everything from BSI scene safety all the way down. Don't feel silly about it because at the end of the day you'll feel silly when you fail if you're not truly preparing yourself that's all i have on that now for the announcement so i was very apprehensive <laughs> to announce this especially on a youtube but um i think it's time with the volunteer help of my some of my colleagues and my friends of emts and paramedics um to create a resource website and a resource social media page for you guys and it is called back of the box talks Dot com and I will link it I'll link everything um, below but essentially the goal is just to help individuals when they decide that they want to delve into EMS to navigate them through their career follow our social media page and visit our website we will have study guides and we will still we will have oral board um, preparation for sale and so you can email us directly if you visit the contact info um, on the website there's an email and you can email us it's info at the back of the box stop back of the box talks.com again we are still production construction um things that are for sale are noted for sale anyway that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it i know there was a lot of information it was pretty long but it was requested and i hope that you guys are doing well even with covid going on